Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is the setup guide for Level Manager Plus. So if you have purchased Level Manager Plus, I will show you how you can create your own Level Manager scene, how you set up all the buttons you need and how to set up Level Manager itself. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to create a new scene and import the package. Once in here, you will have an Octoman folder, which is me, and Level Manager Plus folder, which contains all prefab scenes, scripts, and textures, and also a written manual uh, by me. In the new created scene, you just go over into the hierarchy panel and create a new canvas, where you can place all the buttons, all the panels, and all the other things. Depending on your design, you have to choose how and where you want the world buttons to appear and also where the level buttons will appear. Make sure that you choose the canvas scaler from constant pixel size to scale with screen size, otherwise you might have problems later on with the layout when it is not fitting the screen size. In the canvas, make sure you create at least two panels. Well, I will do because I want to make sure that in one panel is going to be all the level buttons and the other panel the world buttons. Once you created the first panel, make sure that you rename this one to level panel. Create in the canvas another UI panel and rename this one to world panel. Resize it to your needs and where you want them to appear. In the world panel, create another empty game object and rename this one to world spacer. The spacer object will later on hold all the buttons and button informations. Depending on how you want this to happen and appear, you can leave a space to the top, left, right and bottom, so you will have a small gap in between. You can also make sure that you do this one scrollable if you have more worlds than buttons would fit in. The next thing is you go to the level panel and create another spacer for this one too. So again, create empty game object and rename this one to spacer one or level spacer one and make sure that you fit it to your needs. So this will be representing where all your level buttons will be in. The next thing is in the spacer one, you can create or add a grid layout group. If you want to add horizontal or vertical buttons, then you are able to do so because Level Manager um, doesn't really care about this, uh, the layout group, group itself. I add a spacing of 5 in the Y and in the X axis and leave it alone for now. Same for the world spacer. I want this to be a vertical layout group, so I go over and type in vertical and add the layout group and that's it for the moment. Let's create a world button. Select the world spacer game object, right click UI and create a button. As you can see it will automatically snap to the top left corner of the spacer game object. So just drag it slightly and it will automatically snap into the spacer game object. The next thing is in the world spacer itself you want to disable height of child force expand. The next thing is you want to go to the button itself you just created and rename it to whatever your needs. I just rename it to W button. Next thing is you want to add a new component which is a layout group. So we have the possibility to override some of the, um, yeah, some of the by world spacer uh, vertical layout group given um, components. I want to set the minimum height of this one to 40 pixels. As you can see, it already uh, made sure that it fits at least the 40 pixels. You can play around with all the other features and stuff of the layout element later on. The next thing is, I want to add the script component, which is in the scripts folder called world button. So make sure you drag this one into the button itself and it's going to be active. Also, in the world button text, you can just write in anything, but you don't have to. But you might want to rename the text to world text. It is not needed, but you can do it so you see stuff later on better. In the world button, or if the world button is selected, 
drag in the world text into the text component of world text, so this text later on automatically overridden. The next thing is, in the image part, you can now load any UI elements or images and sprites you prefer. I just use the one which I sh sent within the package, which is a rounded blue 46 by 46 pixel panel graphic. Also, as you can see, the text is too small, uh, too small and is readable, is, or it's not readable. So, I change the color to white of the text and make sure that I select best fit. So it will automatically fit the size. So uh, reduce the size of the text element to your needs and of course so it is readable by um, yeah by everyone. Once done with that make sure you create a new tag go to add tag and add the new tag world button. Make sure that the W and the B are both um, big letters. So select this one once you have created it and now drag the world button oh I tagged the wrong one tag the button itself not the text now drag the world button into your prefabs folder no matter where you have your prefabs so it will automatically be created and make sure that the layout element is still in same for the world button script Now let's create a level button. At first go to the level panel spacer 1 and right click it UI create a new button. As you can see it will automatically snap to the top left corner of the spacer game object. Just drag it slightly and it will snap automatically in position. The next thing is we can go over and add new components like at first the layout element so we can later on overwrite existing uh, grid layout group element parts if we need to. Now let's design the button at first go to the image component and add any image you like I use the rounded blue once again. Also I can go to the text element inside and can rename this one to a level text. This level text will represent the number of the text, uh, the number of the level. Once done, select level text and choose the color to white so it's seen better and also press best fit. Now you are able to select and decrease the size of the button text itself and place it wherever we want or you want. Don't forget you need to uniform stretch this one, otherwise you might have problems later on. Now we can also go and add more stuff into the button since we have several images inside too. So go to UI and create an image. Make sure that this is preserving the aspect ratio. Select or decrease it a bit and add, if you like, the star from my scene into the sprites component. So you can see that we have a star system later on set up. Next thing is, you can decrease the alpha of the stars so it's looking like a background image. We can also go over and rename this one to star BG1. BG stands for background. You can rename it however you want, but later on you might want to make sure that you hit and see the right elements. Duplicate the star BG once again and drag it over to the center of the button and rename this one to star bg2. Actually you don't need the star bg but later on for the user experience it might be interesting so users or players know what's happening. Also select the third one and drag this one over to your needs and make sure it is centered and points to the right. Yeah, there we go. Rename star bg3 and that's it for now. Select all three uh, star bgs and duplicate them once again. Make sure once they are selected you increase alpha and you choose any color of the real stars you want to have later on. In my case I use the yellow color in here. As always you can choose and create your own graphics and use them however you want to. 
Also, make sure that we rename the stars to the corresponding background stars. In this case, it's going to be star 3. This is going to be star 2. And the last one is going to be star 1. One more thing we can add is another image component to the button. By the way, don't forget to rename the button to at least L button, so you need that is going to be a level button. And now let's add another image component. So go UI image, make sure it's uh, preserves aspect ratio 2 and resize it to your needs. I'm going to center this a bit. Uh, maybe reduce the size or place it wherever I want to. What's in here, what's going to be in here is one of the world signs or the log signs. So go to the texture folder and enter the log image into the sprite field of the image component we just created. As you can see it might be a bit too big so I reduce the size slightly and place this wherever I want it to be. Also I want to make sure that the world signs I just created are also fitting pretty well at that position. If not, I can always go and rearrange all the images and numbers to my needs. And you can do the same too. Also, in, when the level button is selected, make sure that you create a level button tag. So go to add tag and type in level button with a big L and a big B. And make sure you add the tag over here. Also, we want to add another script component which is called level button which you can find in the scripts folder. Drag it onto the button and what you have to do is you have to fill all the input fields except the last three. So at first I want to add level text to the first slot. Unlocked does not need any changes since it's going to get automatically set up. Also I want star 1, star 2, and star 3 in the corresponding spots. Also level image, which is this one, where the lock or the image for the specific level is going to be entered actually. You can now delete the image you have since it will get later on automatically rearranged anyways. With this stuff set up I can create a prefab out of this, so I drag the level button itself into my prefabs folder. And there we go. Go to star 1, 2 and 3 and select them by holding down control key and disable them on the top left, so they are not seen. Don't forget to apply the changes to the prefab itself. The last thing for the level button itself we need to add an on-click event. So press the plus button on here so you will get a slot for this. Now drag in the level button prefab into the slot and call the function level button push data. This is important so the game manager object knows which level we are in and the save manager needs the same information later on. Don't forget to apply the changes to the prefab if you have created this one already. Now it's time to save the scene as whatever you want. So go to save scene with all your already set up stuff. I'm gonna save that in my scenes folder in here. And I can just call this one whatever I want. I just do L manager. Gonna save that. Also, don't forget to re remember that name later on. Now, open up one of your worlds. In my case, I just go over to any scene I want. And in here, we need to get or create a save manager game object. In version 1.01, .01, there will be a prefab already in the prefabs folder, which you just need to drag into the scene. Make sure that you rename the level manager name to the scene name we just l saved. So in my case, L manager, which is the Unity save file, which you can see in my scenes folder in here. So make sure this is 100% correct. Also, as you may have seen, I renamed all my levels to level 1 underscore 1 
level 1 underscore 2. That means level is just a name for a level. The first number represents the world this button or that level is going to be in. In this case, level 1 underscore 1 means it is going to be the first world with the first level. So the second number represents the level number. So depending on how many worlds you will have later on, in my case I have two worlds, the first level and the second world will be level 2 underscore 1 and so on and so forth. Level 3 underscore 5 would be uh, the, the fifth level in the third world, so remember that. Also make sure that you add an add a game manager object just in case later on it might be important. Um, but basically you don't need to. Um, except you want to start in that particular level, but then you have to read out all the level, but this is not supported by Level Manager Plus. To save later on the score, we have several possibilities, or you have several possibilities. In my case, I just use buttons to send the corresponding points I just got by the level and by the button I just pressed. To save score, you just need to call the script um, safer, and in there there is a function called set score, as you can see over here, and it needs an integer, which is the score you can get, and this is the function you need to call when your round or your game level is over. So collect the, your points wherever you want, but later on make sure that you send the points to the save manager object which, with the set score function, and in this case input an integer number. Now we have set up the whole level manager game object and everything corresponding to it. So it's time to test this one out. When I press play, as you can see, we have already two worlds created or two world buttons. The first one and the second one. And within that you can see five locked by, um, buttons and world one. The first one is unlocked as we set it and the other one is um, disabled. When I now go into my first test level in here, which is level 1 underscore 1, I can set myself any points I want, maybe 5000 points in this case, and as you can see it will automatically unlock the first star, and the second level is unlocked, but in world 1, uh, in world 2, there is no level unlocked yet. So I go to level 2 right now, give myself 10,000 points, and as you can see it automatically has two stars unlocked. Also, when I reload the same level and give myself smaller points, you can see it not, is, is not changing. Also, the second world in the first level is going to be unlocked right now, and so on and so forth. Also, when I go back right now with my points, I will still have the second world selected. So that's everything you need to know. If you have any trouble, don't forget to write me. A mail as you have uh, the mail you is in your in the manual itself if you have any questions you can also write me by YouTube or whatever you want and of course in the forum itself by or on unity 3d.com the last one thing I want to note is if you have any trouble with the safe games or safe data itself you can always get in here select the boolean delete save games and press, press play what you will get is a notification that all save files have been cleared so you might want to make use of this function later on and when I now press the play button again you will see everything is back to normal and nothing has been saved already okay that's it for the setup guide for level manager plus I hope you enjoyed this product thanks for watching bye bye